Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In addition to the new Dawn of the Dukes expansion, we also had a large balance update today, with some pretty big implications for Cummins, Sicilians, and a few others. Whether you get the new DLC or not, if you play Definitive Edition, then these changes are going to be relevant for you. So let's take a look. Starting off with the more general stuff, the Step Lancer had its reload time lowered from 2.3 to 2. This is a buff as it's shortening the delay between attacks, measured in in-game seconds. Step Lancers have been getting a few tweaks lately, with a drop on their gold cost not that long ago as well. This change gives them a 15% faster attack rate, which if you look at their DPS, still lags behind the Knight, as the Knight's attack is both higher and slightly faster. You can't tell from the animations, but Step Lancers and Camels now attack at the same rate, which actually makes them easier to compare. Likewise, in Imperial Age, after all upgrades, the Step Lancer is still doing noticeably less damage than the Nightline, which I think makes sense. It's always struck me more as a unit intended for raiding than one that relies on raw power. Another change is the Hand Cannoneer's hit points have been increased from 35 to 40. This gives them the same HP as an Arblaster, while still being more expensive and very slow to fire. Just like the Step Lancer buff, I'd call this a pretty inoffensive change. Somewhat related, they also say that all units which shoot bullets have their projectile speed increased from 5.5 to 7.5. It may not be immediately obvious which units this includes, as I don't think any unit in the game technically fires a bullet per se. I assume they mean these small projectiles from hand cannoneers, janissaries, conquistadors, halfnitzes, and organ guns. For reference, our blaster arrows move at a speed of 7, so previously their arrows move faster than a bullet. Theoretically, this shouldn't have any effect on their rate of fire, and this is just how quickly the projectiles are moving. I remember this change suggested in the comments on one of my videos about whether the hand cannoneer is too weak, and indirectly this should actually help a bit with their accuracy, as units have less time to change direction. I feel like the main issue people have with hand cannoneers is they aren't anti-infantry enough, in which case the easy solution would be to raise their bonus damage against infantry. I kind of like this approach a bit better though, and see hand cannoneers these days as more anti-pierce armor. More HP and faster projectiles make them generally a bit stronger without doubling down on that one roll against infantry. But now let's take a look at these civilization specific changes, starting with the Burmese. Their Castle Age unique tech, improving Battle Elephant armor, now gives one more Pierce armor. This puts it back to what it originally was at the release of Rise of the Rajas. Situationally, this is pretty meaningful as it means they'll take twice as many shots from Arbalesters in Imperial Age, though they're still just as weak to spear units. Burmese took a huge hit recently when they nerfed the Arambi that sent them from being the 11th best Civ by win rate to around 30th. That drop predictably killed their play rate, and they're now actually the least played civilization if you average across all ELO ratings. Just look at the top 5 most played Civs in 1 vs 1 and team games. I'd say all of these have pretty obvious opening strategies, and a late game unit or combo that they want to spam, all on top of a lot of bonuses directed toward their playstyles. Burmese though have an infantry bonus, a monk bonus, more armor on their battle elephants, and the Arambi. It's sort of all over the place, and I suspect at least part of this change is to give Burmese more of an identity as the tanky battle elephant civilization again. Moving on to the Byzantines, Town Patrol is now free and instantly researched for them in Castle Age. I think this is a good change, as it pairs nicely with their free Town Watch, and it always felt a little off that you didn't get Town Patrol as well. It's one of those quietly useful techs for keeping an eye on the map and spotting raids before they come in. Another change, this time a nerf to the Chinese, was that their team bonus giving them 45 extra food has been reduced to 10% more food. This is a nerf to the bonus in the early game, basically cutting its effect in half with the earliest farms, though it eventually comes back to the point it's an improvement after crop rotation, especially for the Sicilians. Prior to this, I considered it one of the best team bonuses, and for a civilization that's already quite good in high elo games, I think the devs were under some pressure to change it. Unfortunately, it's also nerfing one of the worst civs for a new player statistically, and a case where tournament balance seems to have overruled balance for the general player base. Moving on to the Cumans, they had their archery ranges and stables dropped by 100 wood each. That means you pay just 75 wood now for two critical military buildings. This is a strong bonus for either going scouts into knights or going for archers. Until this point, it did feel like the Cumans' extra town center is their only feudal eco bonus, and yet that's far more of a booming than a rushing strategy. After this change, it feels like you can either boom or rush and still have a bonus helping you out, which I think leads to a big switch in mindset when playing the Civ. If you have a Slav ally giving those buildings extra population space as well, you could almost just build them as walls. Even minus 50 wood feels like it would have been significant, and this should be a pretty major buff for humans. The next civilization actually had several changes. First of all, the Lithuanians lose access to the Blast Furnace technology. 
Instantly, the relics are far more important now, as you can't even get fully upgraded paladins without collecting too, and their late game infantry is immediately worse as well. To compensate, you can now research and train the Winged Hazar instead of the regular Hazar, which is a brand new unit unique to Poland and Lithuania with better stats. They also added one more attack to the latest in Castle Age and two for the Elite version. This is a straight buff in Castle Age of one more attack and basically feels like free Blast Furnace for the Elite version in Imperial. I see these changes as a push away from the Knight line, which is strictly weaker in Imperial now, and instead toward the Lightest and Hazar line. In fact, the Lightest now has more attack than a Paladin and also ignore armor while costing a third less gold, so they're looking more and more like a good alternative. It also makes relics feel even more important than they were before, at least if you're going for Paladins. The next bonus is for the Malians, whose gold mines now last 30% longer instead of getting the free gold mining tech. Mansa Musa vibes are intensifying with this one, having potentially more gold than anyone else from mining. With 12,000 gold around your starting town center, this is a consistent 3,600 extra gold you have access to on standard maps. That's a big buff to their 1v1 late game at the cost of their early game, as the free gold mining tech was great for both archers or knights. At the same time, 30% longer lasting gold mines is a lot for an already top 10 sieve, and I'm curious what the impact of this will end up being. Remember, they have champions with 3 extra pierce armor, cavalier with 3 more attack than a generic civilization after Fremba, the Gabetto, and a solid siege workshop. There's no shortage of good options for them to spend that extra gold on in the late game. And finally, we come to the Sicilians who have had a major overhaul. First off, they now start with an extra 100 stone at the beginning of the game. I think this is a clever bonus. On the one hand, it makes a feudal dungeon rush a bit easier, but on the other, you can also afford to pay for an extra town center, which is helpful if you're going for a 5 town center boom into First Crusade. At the same time, if you just want to play a standard opening, you can also sell the stone at the market for a bit of extra gold. There's a lot of different ways you can play it, and it just gives them a lot more flexibility. Next, their team bonus was changed to remove the cost of the first train transport ship, and it now trains instantly. The transport ship distraction strategy is now in shambles, but admittedly, reduced ship bonus damage was a strange team bonus to begin with. I find it interesting that developers again seem to be doubling down on one-time use bonuses for the Lords of the West civilizations. This change actually seems much more helpful though, as the majority of people weren't really making use of the extra transport ship resistance, despite my best efforts to show how good it could be to tank damage from war galleys in particular. It's basically a free scout now on the water as soon as your first dock is up, and jumping islands in Dark Age also becomes trivial. There's a lot of implications for this one depending on the map, but again I think some people will probably criticize it as another one-time gimmick. The third change is their Imperial Unique Tech Scootage was replaced with the new Halberg Tech. This tech gives their knights and cavaliers plus one melee and plus two pierce armor. I like this change, but Sicilians are also one of my favorite civs to play, so maybe I'm just looking forward to winning with it. Scootage was the one-time use tech that gave your team gold based on how many military units they had, and it was sometimes a bit awkward coordinating when you were going to research it. With this new and admittedly fairly expensive tech, Sicilian Cavaliers now ultimately have one more melee and pierce armor than a Paladin, while also taking half bonus damage from their counters. Fully upgraded Paladins will still have 40 more HP and 2 more attack, but it gives Sicilians a really nice late game power unit. Remember, they take half damage from Halberdiers, more shots from Arblast now than a Paladin, with extra resistance to conversions from First Crusade. It's hard to think of a reasonable counter for a lot of civilizations, and with Elite Sergeants and Cavaliers having 8 Pierce Armor, it's a scary civilization to fight if you're an Archer Sith. Overall though, I'd say most of these are good changes. I like the plus 100 stone and prefer the new unique tech for Sicilians, as well as the Cumans change that frees them from not feeling like you have to go for the Feudal Town Center every game. I noticed the going above and beyond cheat code was also finally unlocked for everyone. I've personally felt like Kato the Censor ending all of my patch note videos with a mention that the cheat code needs to be unlocked for everyone, and it's nice to see that finally happened. It's definitely the most stable 256 times tech mod that I've been able to find. That'll do it for this one though. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.